Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who've been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, where as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Praise be to God.
A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie. And do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us, My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Children in the second grade and below are invited to follow the cross and process to Children's Chapel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Just eight nights ago, we gathered in this nave in darkness, in great anticipation, sharing stories of our tradition, fueling our hope in the growing light until we spring forth with the newly baptized, ringing our alleluias to the rafters. We are Easter people, after all. This is our time to shine. We are dead to sin and alive in Christ, thanks to Jesus Christ, rising victorious over the grave. Alleluia! If we had a social media account for Easter people, I can imagine it being full of all the beautiful pictures I saw last weekend of everyone in their pastel finery, children scurrying for colorful Easter eggs, flowers upon flowers, and churches nearly bursting at the seams to hold all the happy and the hopeful. With the fragrance of lilies still filling the air, we come to the second Sunday of Easter, hopefully still glowing in that paschal light but already being reminded by Gail O'Day in her commentary on John that it is not easy to live into the reality of Easter. The reality of Easter being that Christ was not defeated by death. Even as we're tempted to draw attention towards Thomas this Sunday, emphasizing his doubt, his hesitancy to believe, O'Day calls us to keep perspective on all the disciples. For Mary has already told the disciples that she's seen the Lord, and yet the disciples are cloistered in a room, locked in fear. Thankfully, Jesus appears to them and bids them peace, not once but twice, and even breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. Surely now they're ready to go out in their Easter finery and proclaim the resurrected Christ, right? Not exactly. 
They do tell Thomas that, like Mary Magdalene, they've seen the Lord. But what has changed for them? A week later, and they're back at that house, the doors shut. Are they still locked in fear? Are they still trying to figure out what to do next? Jesus reappears, and we might wonder if his presence is just for Thomas. Again, Jesus bids them peace, and he offers Thomas the opportunity to touch his wounds. And we don't know if Thomas actually touches them, though we're all kind of influenced by our own imaginations and artistic renditions. Perhaps if you've seen the Caravaggio with Thomas's finger visibly in Jesus' pierced side and Jesus holding his wrist as if to maybe guide him or, or hold his hand steady, such a graphic image holds our attention but can distract us from the even more far-reaching point, as O'Day names, the point is Jesus' offer of himself over and over again to people who long to see him. With no questions asked, Jesus offers himself and gives the repeated gift of his presence and his peace. So might we conclude then that Easter people, people who live in the reality of Easter, see Jesus because they seek him, because they believe the truth of his victory over death. And Jesus repeatedly shows up and offers peace unconditionally. Well, then what's so hard about living into that? I'm going to go on a limb and guess that maybe it has something to do with the fact that even if I give you two hours of credit for this Sunday morning, that the other 166 hours of the week are carried out in a world that is not seeking Jesus Christ. At least not the Jesus Christ who still seeks to do the will of the one who sent him. No one, or at least not many, are actively seeking to recreate Christian communities or maybe even communes where everything is held in common. And however lovely it may seem for a community to be of one heart and one soul, to give testimony with great power and to be bestowed with great grace, I shake my head wondering how and where could that actually work? So, Doubting Sarah searched for the farm mentioned in a sermon this past week when I was in Sewanee. My Old Testament professor was the preacher, and Dr. Becky Wright has a keen sense of humor and a deep reverence and love of God in all creation. So preaching on the resurrection, Dr. Wright highlighted a quote from Clarence Jordan, who's the founder of Koinonia Farms in Georgia. Essentially, Jordan says that the good news is that Jesus has risen and comes home with us, bringing all the needy with him. And we don't need to wait until we die to see Jesus. Jesus being with us here and now strengthens us in this life. God tried to strengthen us by the incarnation, but we rejected Jesus. The resurrection then, as he says, quote, was simply God's unwillingness to take our no for an answer. And so we have plenty of good work to do. Now, Jordan had his roots in the Baptist church, and he took the book of Acts to heart. So in 1942, Clarence and his wife Florence and another couple founded the Koinonia Farms as, quote, an intentional community of believers sharing their lives and resources, following the example of the first Christian communities as described in the Acts of the Apostles, end quote. And believe it or not, other families joined them. And there, as it just continues on on their website, it says their, commit, their commitment to racial equality, pacifism, and economic sharing brought bullets, bomb, and a boycott in the 1950s as the KKK and others attempted to force them out. They responded with prayer, nonviolent resistance, and a renewed commitment to live the gospel. They created a mail order business, which continues to sustain the community today. And Dr. Wright made a great plug for their pecans that they will ship to you and make great Christmas gifts. 
and Jordan also translated the New Testament's original Greek into Georgian's vernacular in his cotton patch version. And he was a speaker and preacher until his death in 1969. The community's housing ministry led to the founding of Habitat for Humanity International. For those who seek Jesus, we don't have to look far for a testimony of great power and to see evidence of great grace. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, Jesus said to Thomas and the others who were gathered together in a house again on that night a week later. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, says the living word to us this day, a week after our Easter day. Blessed are we who believe and seek to see Jesus, who work to make visible and tangible the nearness of Christ. Even if we can't get pour our possessions into a collective farm, we start by sharing generously. We strive to see Jesus not only in those we know and love, but also in those who are our neighbor or even strangers. When Philip said that he wanted to see Jesus, how earnest he was, how young the disciples seemed as they played that telephone game to relay the message, all the way to Jesus who had not yet made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, nor had his triumph over the grave. How different Thomas's words are that are easy to imagine as angry as they are grief-stricken unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Yet again, how different our faithful seeking of the risen Christ in one another. We who have not seen Jesus in the flesh, not as the disciples had, we walk in faith working daily to keep alive our hope in the reality of Easter, the light of Christ in the face of ridiculous odds. But any time we fear or doubt, we need only seek Jesus. And wherever we are, he finds us. He comes home with us. We may have to work at it, We may have to, like Thomas, name explicitly what it is that we need. But that unconditional love and merciful, patient grace will see us to the Easter light, reconciling us in that abiding love of God and unity with one another, and how good and pleasant that is indeed. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon the fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Holy Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Through the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God brings a new gift of peace into the world. Let us offer our prayers for peace with thankful hope, saying, the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon your church, that we may be of one heart and soul, live together in unity, and to bring the light of your gospel to the whole world. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, and John, our bishop, for the Episcopal Anglican province of Alexandria, for St. James Eureka Springs, Grace Siloam Springs, and St. Thomas Springdale, for Riverside Church, and for our Episcopal youth community and Sunday suppers. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Inspire the leaders of our nation and all in authority throughout the world with the breath of your peace, that they may bring justice and comfort to all who live in fear or need. We pray especially for Joe, our president, Sarah, our governor, and Lionel, our mayor. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Be present with any who huddle fearfully behind closed and locked doors and let the healing touch of the wounded Jesus come to all who suffer anywhere on earth. We pray especially for an end to the wars in Ukraine, Sudan, and Gaza, and for those injured, displaced, or killed by the earthquake in Taiwan. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Let this community walk in your light and do the work of reconciliation, that we may declare to others the gift of eternal life that has been revealed to us. We pray especially for the safety and hospitality of those who are traveling to Arkansas for the eclipse. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Hear the cries of all who grieve like Thomas, and who suffer from any form of anguish, illness, or hurt, especially Patrick Murphy, Craig Brown, John Joyce, Julie Schultz, Betty Renthal, Alice Hoibu, the Downham family, Kathy Pollard, Michael Kania, Philip Brown, Albert Gray, O'Neill Babich, Annette Kuntz, Eleanor Suttle, and any others we now name aloud or in our hearts. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Complete our joy as we offer our words of thanksgiving to you, especially for the baptism of Ellis Winston Delaney and for any other thanksgivings we now name aloud or in our hearts. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Receive into your eternal life all who have died, that they may have life in Christ's name, especially Karen Fowler Lindemuller, Brandon Robinson, and Bobby Teal, in whose memory the altar flowers are given, and any others we name aloud or in our hearts. The Lord has ordained the blessing. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity Fill your people with the breath of your Holy Spirit, O God, and bring us the assurance of forgiveness that we may be enlightened to participate in Christ's work of reconciliation on behalf of all the world. Through the one who was raised for our redemption, 
and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory everlasting, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. 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 Peace, man. How you doing? All right. Good to see you. Peace. Peace, brother. Thank you. You're welcome. Such a treat. Peace, guys. Peace. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. So glad to be here with you and glad that each one of you is here. Also really grateful that you're able to join us online. A big thanks to Dan and our media ministry volunteers for live streaming our service. If you're not getting our weekly newsletter and you want to receive it, there's a Connect card in the pew rack in front of you. You can also fill out the digital form on the I'm New Here section of the website. But if you'll tell us your name and your email address, we'll add you to that list. We certainly hope to get to know you better in the weeks ahead. Because of the eclipse, the office will be closed tomorrow, but community meals will be served. There are other announcements on that green epistle insert. Don't forget that the parish retreat is the last weekend in April, and the deadline to sign up is today. If you would like to join us for the parish retreat, make sure you sign up before this evening. On Saturday, Dr. Christina Edmondson, the author of Faithful Anti-Racism, will be in town. She will be speaking at the Fayetteville Public Library at 2 o'clock. And I'm really delighted that our Becoming Beloved community is a part of bringing her here and sponsoring her visit. So I hope you'll consider joining for that lecture and the discussion that follows there in the library at 2 o'clock. But before that, come out on Saturday morning for the Equality 5K being hosted by the local chapter of the NAACP. Our own Sarah Milford will be competing in that. And she has assured us that she will be walking quickly. And so anybody who would like to join her is invited and encouraged to walk quickly. If you're not up for that, you can show up and cheer her and the other runners on. You can also sign up to volunteer if you're willing to help out. You can find more information about that through our newsletter website and other social media links. After the service today, I hope that you will take an Easter lily with you if you will care for it in your home. By the end of this morning, we hope that every Easter lily in the windows, up at the altar, in the welcome center, and in the parish hall has found a good home. So take one with you. We've enjoyed them. Thank you to everybody who contributed, not only for the lilies, but for all of our Easter flowers. But it's time for them to go home. So take them home with you and enjoy them in your house, perhaps planting them in your garden. <clears throat> Whoever you are and wherever you are on your pilgrimage of faith, you are welcome in this place and you are welcome at God's table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Christ's self for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, it's the birthday Sunday. Oh. I 
I'm so glad Linda Jones reminded me that it's the first Sunday of the month. And I'm embarrassed to think about all the people who came at 7.30 and 8.45 that didn't get a birthday prayer. I'll have to make up for that next week. But since I was run, indeed, indeed. Since I was reminded, let's pause and give thanks. Anybody have an April birthday? If you do stand up where you are, hooray. Any other April birthdays? A couple, yep, April birthdays, wonderful. Well, let's pray for all of those in this service, at home, and just about everywhere who has a birthday during the month of April. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Y'all may be seated. What about anniversaries? Any anniversaries? Hooray, Holly's got one. Any other? Holly, what anniversary is this for you and Fran? 30. 30. Oh, wonderful. It's a treat to celebrate that with you. Any other, any other April anniversaries? Marthy, what anniversary is this for y'all? 26. 26. Hooray. Well, let's pray for all of those who celebrate anniversaries during the month. I'll get that in a minute. During the month of April, let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, yet again, walk in love, <laughs> as Christ loved us and gave Christ's self for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hands. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you, to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us in a covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior, incarnate by the Virgin Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet is without sin. To the poor proclaim the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Paul and Martin, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.